there YouTube, this is Michael with Zeno Tech Tutorials again. This week I'm going to be doing a short video on the Skype for Business Admin Center. Um, I know I use it my videos are short, but the Skype for Business Admin Center probably has the smallest admin center of all of them. Um, just like I did not do last week, I'm not going to so much touch on the Skype client, just like I didn't do Outlook last week. I'm going to save those for a separate Office Pro Plus video. Uh, that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So what I actually did is I temporarily added an E5 trial just to show you guys some of the PSTN features, which is really only one or two tabs. Um, if I feel like I need it for a later video down the road, then I'll just buy it for a month if it's not a yearly commitment or whatever. But either way, so uh, once again, if you're on the old admin center, you'll just see an admin drop down link here on the left hand side. For the new admin center, which this is, just click on the admin center's drop down and then go to Skype for Business. So, just to give you guys a bit of a heads up, if you guys currently have anything on premise in terms of a link server or a Skype server or anything like that, you're going to notice certain things won't happen. When you are running director synchronization and Office 365 sees that the user that's being synchronized already has a SIP address assigned to them. Um, which I'll show you where the SIP address is, which is actually back in the Exchange Admin Center. Um, but if it sees it already has a SIP address assigned, that and among other properties, it won't actually give you give that user a Skype Online account, even if you give them a license. For that to happen, if you have a link or Skype on prem, um, basically you're going to need to either remove that account on prem if you intend to start from start new in the cloud. Or you'll actually have to go through a, a link to Skype or a Skype server to Skype online migration, which I'll probably do in a much later video. Um, let me actually show you where the SIP address is now, just so you know the differences between that and the other addresses that are there. Um, it's listed as one of the email addresses under the mailbox properties in the Exchange Admin Center. Um, and this is really going to be the only thing that I touch on in the Exchange Admin Center. Oh, and I'm also going to go back to unified messaging uh, briefly as well. But the SIP address is basically, um, by default, the UPN, which is the user principal name, the primary SMTP, and the SIP address are the same. Um, but the SIP address specifically is what um, Skype or Link works off of. Um, the SMTP and the UPN, well, the UPN is also dependent on it, but the SMTP is independent of that. So, well, that's, okay. So let me go ahead and go into the mailbox properties here. And once the screen comes up, you're going to click on the email address tab on the left hand side, and you'll see that my primary SIP and SMTP are the same. Um, but like I said, in, in terms of Skype, it's the SIP address. So that's where that is. Uh, that can be different, although if that, although I, I find a lot of times that if that's different from your UPN, um, it tends to cause an issue signing in, or at least a headache and a learning period because you have to d use two different sign-in addresses. So going back to the Skype for Business Admin Center, main dashboard just shows user statistics and the organization information. It's not really too much for me to go over here. Um, Skype online users, just one and and users in cloud. Um, basically, that's looking at to see if, you know, do I have a Skype hybrid set up with a link or Skype server on prem? Um, but I just have one user, one cloud-based user, so that's all it's going to show. Um, users synced and homed online basically would be if I was in a Skype hybrid or a link hybrid situation, and they were a synced user, but I'd migrated them to 365. User enabled for dial-in conferencing. I haven't actually enabled anybody yet. I basically just got the E5 license that's added to this tenant about 20 minutes ago just to show you a few things. Um, and then the organization information, really not too much to go over there, just basic stuff. Um, this, the user section is just where you're going to see the Skype online users. This is what I was talking about before, where if you have a link or Skype server on-prem and you give it a license, it's not going to show up here until you either remove that account or you migrate that account. It's not going to give you a Skype online account. Just like if you're doing Exchange Hybrid, it won't give you an Exchange Online mailbox if you have Hybrid set up properly and it sees that mailbox on-prem. Um, nothing really here. There's nothing to edit or anything, just filters and searching. So or, in the organization tab, um, 
we have the presence privacy mode under general, which is basically, um, you know, by default, you see the, the private, the presence settings for everybody in your organization. Do you want to leave it like that? Or do you just want it to be set up where it ha the person has to be added to your contacts list for you to see their presence? Uh, pretty self-explanatory there, as well as the mobile phone notifications. Basically, if, um, you know, when you set up Skype or Link on your phone and you sign in, it'll ask you on your phone, um, whether, whether it's Windows, iPhone, or Android, if you want to enable push notifications, um, you know, for messages and calls and things like that. This, th that setting is actually controlled through your tenant, and this is where you can set that up. Um, and obviously the Apple push notifications because those are a little bit different in themselves for whatever reason. Um, Apple kind of has their own settings with that. All right, so I go into voice users, and once again, I don't actually have anybody in here, but this is what I was with that thing before, where it was uh, users enabled for dial-in conferencing, basically. That's what the voice user section is. So dial-in conferencing itself, this was where I added the E5 license. Uh, these weren't showing up before because the E5 license basically makes Microsoft the PSTN provider. Um, you can still choose to do third-party solutions, um, but honestly, if you're doing that, then really you should probably be getting E3 with the Cloud PBX add-on or something like that. Uh, E5 is really designed to have the Enterprise Voice solution as well as to make Microsoft the PSTN provider. Basically, you know, you're only paying one company for the phone. Um, and it just kind of streamlines everything. Um, these are basically all the numbers that are available for my tenant. You know, if I send out a conference bridge um, or a, a meeting request, the phone numbers, that, that's on the bottom of them. Um, these are all the different country numbers. Um, I believe the Houston one for me is the dedicated and the default one because I actually live in Dallas County. Um, so that's probably the closest one to me. Um, Dallas County, Texas. So I go ahead and go over and go to the Microsoft Bridge settings, which is basically this here. Um, a lot of times when somebody joins your call, um, and I see a lot with when somebody external to your organization joins your call, it'll say uh, so and so is joining the call, so and so is exiting the call. Um, this is basically those notifications if you want them on or off, and then asking users. Um, this piece here is generally if um, somebody dials in on the phone and you can't see their name and all you see is their phone number or you see the caller ID, uh, you can have them record their name so you know who's joining. Um, and then this is the pin length basically um, for the um, conference ID for the meeting organizer. Um, and then automatically send emails to users of PSTN settings change, self-explanatory on there. Third-party providers, no, I don't want to save. Third-party providers is basically um, what I was talking what, what I mentioned before, where you can have another uh, provider that works with Microsoft for the PSTN. Um, they can provide the phone numbers. I know Cisco is a big one, um, but basically they can provide the phone numbers and you port that over to Microsoft and things like that. Um, I'm not really going to go through the full import and export wizard because I don't really have the means to um, because I don't have anything to import or export. Uh, if you want to try this out on your tenant, the E5 license, you don't have to pay for it to do the free trial. It's a 30 day free trial. Um, if you don't pay for it after the 30 days, then it just goes into um, disabled and then um, deprovisioned after that. You don't have to pay for the trials. Um, and then dial-in users. Basically, once again, the only dial-in user is myself because that's the only one that exists. So I'm going to go to the meeting invitation here where basically um, this is just customized settings. Um, when you're sending out the invitations to users, be it internal or external, this is just if you want to have logos or a help link or legal or just generic text. Um, none of this is necessary. It's just cosmetics, basically. And the tool section. 
This tool section here is similar to the tool section on the main admin dashboard, um, which I don't quite remember where it is on this one. So I'm going to go back to the old admin center really quickly just to show you the similarities here. Um, basically, if I come to tools on the left hand side over here, um, it's it's pretty similar to this here. Um, this is just an overall check and these two are exchange, um, but these are the checks just for Skype. Uh, oh, and one thing I didn't touch on before, and I apologize, I didn't. Um, these are all basically deployment wizards that will help you walk through setting up um, in full detail, more detail than I'm going into how to set up the online services. Uh, the only one that's still pending is the video I'm doing right now, which is Skype. All right. And that's really all there is to the Skype Admin Center. Um, really quick, just to go back to the Exchange Admin Center to touch on some of the items that I said last week I would touch on this week. Uh, mainly, it's the unified messaging. The unified messaging basically is, um, it ties into that, that, that enterprise voice and that phone number service. The unified messaging, by and large, is for voicemail. Um, basically, somebody calls you, you don't answer to your enterprise voice number. Um, you get an MP3 in your email with the audio file of the voicemail, but it also gets transcribed into text. Um, obviously, that text is not perfect, depending on you know if the person may have an accent. Not to not to sound rude, just you know if, if if the person has an accent or they're not speaking clearly, or maybe just the service isn't perfect. Anybody watching this, we're all in IT. We know things aren't exactly perfect. So when I go and I want to add a UM dial plan, um, I'm not going to go too much into this, but basically um, this kind of just goes over the different settings for it. A lot of these settings, unfortunately, I can't show you just because I haven't really enabled a lot of these things. Um, like, like I said before, I just got the E5 a few minutes ago. Um, but I'm going to put some information as, as far as UM, um, the uh, dial plans and the IP gateways. I'm going to put some information in the description for you guys um, so you can go ahead and read on that and you can get um, a better understanding than what I'm explaining. Because like I said, I'm, I'm not explaining this stuff well. I know that much. Um, but yeah, basically, I mean, all this is pretty self-explanatory. And once again, to use the, the UMIP gateway, I have to make a dial plan first anyway, because I have to browse out for it. But like I said, there's really not too much to the Skype interface as far as from the admin perspective. Um, I'll show the client itself in a later video. Like I said, when I do Pro Plus, I'll probably kind of just roll everything into one video. Uh, but that's about it for this week. Um, let me know what you guys think. As always, I'll be putting this stuff up on LinkedIn um, a couple times throughout the week. Uh, I'm thinking next week I may do SharePoint or I may touch on one of the more obscure services, uh, i.e. Yammer, Sway, things like that. Um, but I'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next week.